Okay, you're almost done having to listen to my voice. Um, we're going to talk about cystic fibrosis, and I know I said in class. Understand that while this is located under respiratory disorders for your patients, for the pediatric patient, it is so not just a respiratory disorder. Uh, cystic fibrosis is a genetic disorder. Um, it involves multiple systems in the body uh, of primary focus is that um, it creates an increased viscosity of mucus gland secretions. Basically, it makes very thick, very sticky, tenacious mucus. And this mucus causes problems in so many other parts of the body. Um, you will also find an elevation of electrolytes in their sweat. Um, it used to be, um, that would be how they, many parents would bring their child in and they would voice to the pediatrician that their child tasted very salty. Not sure why they were licking their child, but they tasted salty. Um, and that would be a big red flag. Um, they have found that uh, there's um, some involvement of the autonomic nervous system as well. Um, and like I said, it is genetic. It's an autosomal recessive trait. It's a defective gene inherited from both parents with an overall incidence of one children in four um, if both parents have that defective gene. So here's a breakdown. Uh, when you think of cystic fibrosis, think of this chart. So it's an exocrine gland dysfunction. And where are your exocrine glands located? The pancreas. Um, this causes abnormal mucus secretion and obstruction. And from that, the bronchi are affected, the small intestine is infected, the pancreatic ducts are affected, as are the bile ducts. So in the bronchi, you will have bronchial obstruction, which then places them at risk for pneumonia, um, obstructive emphysema. The intestines, um, inspissated meconium. <laughs> um, basically, it's a big giant mucus plug of the intestine, uh, and it creates um, an intestinal obstruction of the newborn. And so what they'll have to do is go in and remove uh, the obstruction, but potentially have to remove part of the intestine. Um, this can also continue on into their um, older child's uh, life with bowel blockages and such. Um, pancreatic ducts can become blocked, um, which essentially it breaks down the pancreas so it's not functioning as well, which then leads to malabsorption. So as the body is given nutrients, it doesn't absorb them correctly. It's not breaking them down correctly. Um, and then the bile ducts, as they become obstructed, um, you'll see biliary cirrhosis, um, so disease of the liver, which ultimately will cause hypotension, um, backing up um, from the liver, uh, causing portal hypertension. Okay, I love that breakdown so that you know it's not just a respiratory problem. So, testing uh, to diagnose it, uh, first off they'll do a sweat chloride test. Um, they now screen for it um, in newborns, especially if there's a family history of it. Um, it is easily identified with DNA identification. So, the way it could present with respiratory symptoms is um, you'll hear wheezing respirations. They'll have a dry, non-productive cough. Why, if they have all this mucus? Because the mucus isn't going anywhere. Um, that's what makes it so difficult. Um, so then you'll see that generalized obstructive emphysema, so there'll be air trapping. Um, you may hear atelectasis, and that's uh, where the alveoli have collapsed, and um, some are opening back up 
and that causes that, that crackly sound. Uh, you may see cyanosis. Uh, definitely as the child becomes older into the adolescent years, you'll see clubbing of the fingers and the toes. That's that rounded, um, the digits almost start looking like, I call them frog fingers, but um, the, they become very round, padded. Um, and they will suffer from repeated bronchitis and pneumonia episodes. Um, so some other things that they'll present with, meconium ileus, that's that blockage of the newborn. Uh, the first bowel movement of the newborn is supposed to be meconium. Uh, it becomes um, lodged uh, and the bowel doesn't move. And it is a surgical emergency. Um, you may see uh, intestinal obstructions. Um, the stools may have undigested food in them. Uh, they'll be much larger because of the undigested food. Um, they may look frothy um, and they'll have a really foul odor. Uh, they may float um, and look like there's mucus surrounding them and that's not unusual. Uh, prolapse of the rectum, uh, that comes from overstraining, trying to um, remove masses um, and having difficulty moving that along and emptying because of the mucus. So in the child with cystic fibrosis, uh, you may see delayed puberty in the girls. Um, boys commonly uh, will be sterile. Um, I've already said parents will uh, say that their child tastes salty. Uh, you may see dehydration in them, uh, alkalosis, or hypoalbuminemia are also some things they could present with. And it isn't always picked up right at birth. Um, it can be picked up later if there's failure to thrive of the infant. So pulmonary complications. Um, pulmonary complications are present in almost all patients with cystic fibrosis. But the onset or the extent of them um, varies. It's, it's unique to the individual. Uh, it depends on how um, compliant they are with medication, with enzymes. How compliant are they with pulmonary toilet, that's pulmonary percussion, um, with diet. Uh, all of those can help with um, reducing uh, complications, pulmonary complications. How often are they exposed to viral infections? So. Um, some things that make them predisposed for pulmonary complications is uh, because of the mucus, um, it doesn't mobilize easily, so it's a good place for bacteria to colonize and grow. Um, like I said, the, the secretions are very hard to mobilize and get out. Some common pathogens that you may see this, the patient with cystic fibrosis present with. Pseudomonas aeruginosa, Porphyria cepatia, uh, Staphylococcus aureus, H influenza, E. coli, and Klebsiella Klebsial pneumonia. Um, some of these are very common, such as E. coli, Staph, um, but they're not common as uh, pulmonary pathogens. Uh, Klebsiella is one um, that's very prevalent in patients who have cystic fibrosis. Uh, Pseudomonas as well presents with bright green uh, mucus. Um, keep going. Um, eventually the lung tissue um, just begins to deteriorate. It can only take so much damage from the mucus secretions and um, the airways being blocked and um, the colonization of the bacteria. So um, you talk about life expectancy uh, with a patient with cystic fibrosis. And a lot of that life expectancy um, relies upon how their pulmonary system and how many complications they've had. Um, there is uh, lung replacement um, that's been done. Uh, organ donors will donate lung tissue. Um, 
but there hasn't been a lot of solid research to truly say if it extends life or if it does extend life, does it extend quality of life um, for the patient with cystic fibrosis? And understand that if they get a lung replacement, lung transplant, that in no way cures or fixes this disease or puts them in remission at all. It just extends their timeline uh, for the progression. So as they progress along with their uh, with the cystic fibrosis and the complications that occur, um, you're going to start seeing more, such as chronic hypoxemia. You'll see coronal pneumothorax, uh, hemoptysis, he hemoptysis <laughs> as well. Um, in the gastrointestinal tract, like I said, it does uh, block, gets in the way of absorption. They do take enzymes daily to help with the digestion. So respiratory-wise, how is it managed? Um, airway clearance therapies, bronchodilator medication, uh, a consistent physical exercise routine is promoted, aggressive treatment of pulmonary infections. Anytime they come in with a pulmonary infection, it's at minimum a two to three week stay. Um, they pack a bag, they plan on staying, it's gonna be a long, out. So they do take pancreatic enzymes. Uh, they're on a high protein, very high calorie diet, as much as 150% of the recommended dietary allowance. Um, if they have ileuses, they um, are placed on protocol to treat those. Um, prognosis, estimated life expectancy, and this was in 2009, was 37.5 years. Um, like I said, with the transplant, there's some that it may increase the number of years the patient has, but it doesn't necessarily increase the quality of life. So um, I repaired the link on one of the videos. So there are two videos now posted that you have access to. One of them is uh, a woman who talks about her experience with it. They're very educational. Um, the other one is a uh, mom with her um, infant. And um, it's a little lighthearted, but it, it's how she handles taking care of her child and um, their experience with cystic fibrosis. So I highly recommend you watch them. Pneumonias, I'm not going to talk about um, other than focusing on developmental stages of the child you have had this content, uh, review it from your medical surgical book and in your textbook, but I'm not going to lecture on it. Okay, thank you very much, and I will see you in class on Thursday.